So those were a couple things that I hated about the church. Here's the thing. Hi gang, Kim York here. If you're new to this channel, this is where we just talk a lot about business, about faith, about life. Sometimes I chronicle my stories and my journeys and I'm just really excited that you're here. And I'm excited about our topic today because I wanna share with you some things really like before my faith. It's just really funny now that I am a Christian because I used to be so anti-Christian. People that knew me earlier in my life, you know, people that I've lost touch with or, you know, people were surprised to find out that I had, you know, really become a Christian and had this new faith because I was so against the church and the religion. And I just want to go over a couple things I really used to hate about the church. Um, hate's a really strong word, but I did. I really did. And I, I just wanted to share this with you today. So first off, the first thing that I really hated about the church was the law. You know, the, the law of the church. I was talking today um, to somebody about like how much of like the Catholic guilt there is, right? And that is like really alive. That is really a thing. I grew up Catholic um, and you're, you're, you're just meant to like repent because you know, you're told you're constantly sinning and, um, and I get that. And, but it's just this whole thing where you like know that you're like bad, you know? And a couple of weeks ago, our pastor was preaching during church saying, sometimes people ask me, right, he's saying this, why don't you preach more on sin? And he's like, I know what they're saying. They're saying like, why don't you make people feel bad? But he's like, look, the preaching of the law will never save you or anyone else. The preaching of the law will never help you live it. And he was talking about how the enemy even takes the law and says, look, look at this, you're not doing this and wants you to feel bad. You know, so it's like the law is like a tool used by the enemy, but at the same time, like it's a tool that's used by a lot of leaders of the church to also make you feel bad, in my opinion. And I hated that. I hated feeling bad. I didn't want to feel bad regarding my faith or, you know, anything like that at all. The law really shouldn't empower you as a preacher or as judgment. And he was talking about how the law can sometimes raise a bunch of self-righteous, conceited Christians. And that is totally true. It, it empowers people with a lot of judgment. People think they're better because they start judging sin. Well, I read my Bible and I don't sin like you sin. You know, and, and that kind of leads me into the next thing that I hated about the church was the people. <laughs> I hated a lot of the people of church because everything that we just talked about, it's represented by people. It comes from people who want to pass judgment. That comes from people first. I think judgment is something that's ugly. I think it's something that I've struggled with. Um, I read a video about that several uh, weeks ago as I was coming, you know, back from not making videos during my pregnancy and sharing about how that's something that I've realized about myself. But judgment is ugly. And I felt like there were so many Christian Christians who were so judgy, you know? So I, I knew that that was coming from the people that I was encountering of the church. And so I knew that they were a bad representation as well. Or I knew that they were, an a or I thought, excuse me, that they were an accurate representation. Um, when really they were a bad representation. You know what I also hated about the church? I hated that it was boring. Again, growing up Catholic, going to Catholic mass. I haven't been to a Catholic mass in forever, but I imagine even as a faithful Christian now, going to a Catholic mass, I would still be pretty bored. <laughs> it is legitimately really boring. And then as a kid and as a young adult going through that process, so boring. You know what I also thought was really boring is reading the Bible. I thought that that was so boring. And 
I think that it can be. I mean, look, like it can definitely be dry, no question. But I think that with the way that the church was represented to me, we had to keep things like very pure. So it was like reading the King James Version in the Old Testament was like the way to go, which is kind of boring. And I wasn't exposed to all these new translations until very recently, right? Like if you read the New Living Translation, it is so different. I'm gonna look up the difference right now on my phone. We have multiple Bibles, but I don't feel like Kevin knows. Um, between the King James Version and the New Living Translation Version. So one of my favorite um, verses, just like something that I've been on a kick with recently is Philippians 4, 6. It's great. I've been literally watching problems just like being solved around me, just like staying in this. So for your King James Version, and this is like a really simple verse too. This is very simple. Your King James Version is be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Let your requests be made known unto God. I'm, I would venture to say that I'm a smart person and that's very difficult to understand. Furthermore, it's very difficult to read pages of that where it's actually interesting and it's captivating your attention and you're not like daydreaming about what else is going on in your life. And then if you look at the New Living Translation, it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Well, now that makes so much sense. And because I'm able to understand that with this translation and then apply it in my life and watch things get better in my life because I literally, I worry, and then I remember Philippians 4, 6, and I'm like, nope, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. And then I pray about something in that spot and I tell God what I need and then I thank him for all he has done and then he fixes it around me. Then I get thirsty for more Bible verses because it's affecting my life positively because I understand it because of the New Living Translation. But the way that the church was represented to me growing up, nobody would have put this translation in front of me. It was read your King James Bible. You know, I don't understand it. Be smarter. <laughs> so those were a couple things that I hated about the church. Here's the thing, is I really had held those things against the faith itself. And that was such an issue, I realize now, in my life, because I was faithless as a result. Now, even though I don't like those things about the church, I still don't like when people use the law in a judgmental way, I don't like self-righteous conceited Christians, and I don't like being bored related to studying my faith. I would rather be entertained. So I don't read a King, King James Version Bible. I read a New Living Translation Bible. So those things aren't terribly past tense. But what is current now is I know that I would not hold that against my faith or my relationship with Jesus Christ. Is because there are people that are out there that misrepresent him, that I cannot hold that against him. In fact, I would be the one missing out regarding our relationship if I held that against him. That would prevent me from getting to know him and from using things in my life, using a relationship in my life to make me feel whole, be a better person, feel better, all of those things. So if you can relate, to any of those things regarding dislike, then no problem. But don't hold that against your faith. That would be an enormous error, no question. So that was just something I really wanted to share with you guys today. I was thinking about that. So that's it, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to my channel. It's like a red button right over 
here, <laughs> I think. And um, we'll see you next week just with more thoughts. And I hope you really like this video. Have a great week. Bye, guys. <laughs>